Straight ahead on WBKB News at 11, child abuse and neglect is on the rise in Alpena, Michigan. Plus, dads and daughters dance their hearts out tonight at Besser Elementary School. And the U.S. Department of Transportation is requesting proposals from air carriers interested in providing service in Alpena. We'll have those stories, plus your local weather and sports. WBKB News at 11 starts now. From Rogers City to Tawa City and all points in between, this is Northeast Michigan's award-winning news team. Your source for news, weather, and sports. We are WBKB News at 11. Yesterday, the Alpena Police Department arrested two area residents for fourth-degree child abuse. Good evening, I'm Ashley Reed. Officers began working on the case earlier in the week when they conducted a joint investigation with Child Protective Services investigators from the Alpena office. Officers did make contact with the husband and wife who were at the time living in Alpena with their kids. The investigation determined that the children were not safe in the residence and they were removed. Officers later made contact again with both parents and subsequently arrested them without incident. Both parents are being held at the Alpena County Jail on fourth degree child abuse neglect charges, which are one year misdemeanors. Child abuse and neglect is currently a very significant issue in our community. This is largely due to an impact from drug addiction that is sometimes combined with mental illness. Numbers seem to be climbing in the amount of calls Child Protective Services receive every day. Alpena, Alcona, and Montmorency counties have already had 123 signed investigations this quarter of the year. I think we're very fortunate. We live in a, in a wonderful community. Uh, we have active child abuse councils in Alcona, in Alpena, in Presqu'il, in Mount Morency. And we're, th these folks are working very hard to put the issue to the forefront of how much child abuse and neglect impacts our community. April is National Child Abuse Prevention Month, and on Tuesday from 10 a.m. until noon, pinwheels will be placed in front of the county courthouse to represent every child that has been abused or neglected in our community. To report any child abuse or neglect, call toll-free at 855-444-3911. Besser Elementary School girls and their father figures enjoyed some fun bonding time tonight. Tonight was the third annual Daddy-Daughter Dance held at the school. This year's theme was Candyland, and everyone was decked out in their themed dresses and suits. We do this as just a, a morale builder for the girls, get them out, whether they can come with a dad, a, a grandpa, an uncle. Some moms come, some sisters come, or they come with friends. doesn't matter. Just get them here, have fun. Many daughters and their dads hit the dance floor showing off their best moves. Others explored the giant candy table or got their picture taken together. Many of the girls posing with a giant lollipop that read, I love my daddy. Because sometimes you don't get enough time with our daughters, so you know, a lot of things going on all the time. The two previous year's themes were red carpet and daddy-daughter disco. The U.S. Department of Transportation is now requesting proposals from air carriers interested in providing essential air service in Alpena. SkyWest Airlines operating as Delta Connection is currently providing service at Alpena County Regional Airport under a two-year contract for an annual subsidy of about $3.1 million. As the end of the current contract approaches, the department is requesting proposals for a new contract period beginning October 1st of this year. Mayor Matt Walagora says flying local is important for the economic vitality of the region. A lot of things about the air service and the airport hinge on how many people fly in and out of Alpena. So the more people that fly in and out of Alpena, um, the better uh, proposals uh, we're likely to see uh, in, the, in the next couple of months and then uh, being chosen in the end in October. And, uh, and the better schedule, the more people that fly in and out of Alpena, the better schedule and the more flights we're offered. The U.S. DOT has the final say in whose proposal is accepted. However, the community is asked to submit their comments and opinions. Air carriers must file their, their proposals no later than May 14th. WBKB 11 meteorologist Adam Claibon is here with a first look at weather. Adam? Okay, thank you, Ashley. We dealt with a lot of rain today, upwards to right around a half of inch, but now that rain is starting to switch over to snow. You can see we have a mixture in the area. 32 degrees, east winds are at 7 miles per hour, and as we go ahead and take a look at our radar, hey, temperatures not cooling off too much behind this system, so 
tomorrow. It won't be too much of a cool off either as we're expecting highs to be in the middle and the upper 30s, but currently at 40 degrees in Chicago, 32 here in Alpena and 48 down in Cincinnati. Hey, spring temperatures, they are on the way. We won't see them tomorrow, but they do look to make their way or make an entrance as we go into Sunday. And it does look to be very nice for us as high pressure will be in control. But we had all the rain throughout the day. Even some of us saw some of that mixed precipitation as well as the freezing rain. But we'll be seeing snow throughout the overnights. It is back and it will be here until early tomorrow. And it will be a pretty cold Saturday as temperatures will be in the middle 30s and the upper 30s. But still, the winds, they will be gusty anywhere between 10 to 20 miles per hour. So wind chills will be in the 20s for sure. And a fabulous Sunday is on the way. But what does that mean and how nice is it going to be? Well, I will have that answer as well as your full forecast coming up in a few minutes. All right, thanks, Adam. Well, with the weather a little down in the dumps and some less than exciting news on some summer event cancellations, we went over to speak with Leslie Dorr at the Downtown Development Authority today to get a positive spin on what's coming up, a little something to look forward to, let's say. And they have quite a few new things on the line up for this summer happening downtown. We have um, Friends Together is doing their Five for Friends celebration in downtown Alpena, and that's going to be phenomenal and free for anyone who wants to come June 6th. It'll be at the brewery. Relay for Life is moving their event downtown. They'll be using the Heritage Trail, so that'll be fantastic. Yes. Also a great um, venue for them to get their message out and educate folks along the Heritage Path, and people can just jump in and walk anytime they want. We have the International ROV competition that will be in downtown Alpena, quite a bit of it. Some of it will be at the high school. But that's not all. Currently, the Downtown Promotions Committee is working on a few different evening activities to come this summer, as well as a possible cook-off in August. Dort says they are working very hard to get things moving. The championship episode of a fishing tournament that was filmed in Alpena last year will air on CBS Sports this August. 24 of the world's best professional, professional bass anglers were welcomed to, to Alpena last August to fish in a tournament on Long Lake, Hubbard Lake, and Grand Lake. It was turned into a series on the Outdoor Channel's Major League Fishing Show that brought a lot of attention to Alpena. I know that we had people from all over calling, that are still calling, um, congratulating us, uh, but then we also have people who are steady, continuing to inquire about what lakes were they on, what lake did Kevin Van Dam pull 80 pounds of fish out of, and where can I find a place to stay near there because I'm bringing my family up this summer. So that's why we did it. We did it to introduce the nation to Alpena and what Northeast Michigan has to offer. A large audience will say hello to Alpena when the last episode airs on CBS August 9th at 1 p.m. Check your local listings to find out what channel it will be on. And the Michigan Historical Commission announced today that they will be accepting nominations for the Governor John B. Swainson Award. The award is given annually by the Michigan Historical Commission to state, county, or municipal employees who have gone above and beyond their official job duties to help preserve Michigan's history. To recognize these contributions, in 1996, the Michigan Historical Commission instituted the award in honor of the legislator, governor, and judge whose commitment to history continues to be an inspiration. Jack Dempsey, president of Michigan's Historical Commission, released this statement today saying, quote, Our historic resources are among Michigan's greatest treasures, and the Swainson Award helps us pay tribute to those who serve as stewards of our state's rich heritage, end quote. The deadline to submit nominations is May 2nd. The Michigan Historical Commission is dedicated to enriching the quality of life and strengthening the economy by providing access to information and preserving and promoting Michigan's heritage. You can read more about our broadcast stories and get the scoop on other news items online. Just visit WBKB11.com for sports weather and news updates anytime, day or night. Later, we'll check in with meteorologist Adam Claybon for the full weather forecast. But first, a company is stopping the sale of its smart smoke alarm for the time being. Find out what Nest Labs is working to fix. That story and more coming up in your Money Watch. Thanks for joining us here tonight, everyone. For our state news this evening, an invasive plant species called Japanese knotweed is taking over the city of St. Joseph, Michigan, and it's starting to scare homeowners. It's growing all over the city in parks and even some people's yards, and no one knows how to stop it. But everyone does know that it's not native to Michigan or even the U.S. for that matter. And because it's foreign, that means there's no animals that eats the knotweed to keep the plant under control. Randy Counterman, a conservation biologist out of Kalamazoo, says it may look harmful 
harmless enough right now, but in the spring and summer, the knotweed takes over. It's already spread over several miles, and it seems to be unstoppable. Neither cutting it nor spraying with herbicides works. Research indicates knotweed can kill all the native plants around it, but even worse, they can even break down sewer pipes in the foundations of people's houses. Counterman says it'll cost the city between $150,000 and $180,000 to get rid of the knotweed. He says the problem stems from people gardening irresponsibly with non-native plants. Moving into your Money Watch, the Labor Department says employers added 192,000 jobs last month. The numbers show the economy may be gaining some momentum with solid job growth after a harsh winter. The unemployment rate remains at 6.7%. Nest Labs, the high-tech home monitoring device, is stopping the sale of its smart smoke alarm, at least for the time being. Nest founders say there's a chance the smoke alarm's owner could unintentionally turn off the device by waving his or her hand in front of it. Nest is working on a software fix and hopes to have the smoke alarm back on the market in a couple of months. And here's something to satisfy your craving for spicy and sweet. Sonic will soon offer a chocolate jalapeno milkshake. The new shake will launch April 28th as part of Sonic's Summer of Shakes campaign. Two other new flavors include Oreo peanut butter and salted caramel. There's more to come on WBKB News. Shannon McGrath will be in with the latest news in sports. But first, Adam Clavon is next with your full weather forecast. Stay tuned. Welcome back, everyone. Meteorologist Adam Claibon has been keeping an eye on the weather for us. Adam? Okay, thanks, Ashley. Yet again, we're going to talk about today's high temperatures. And if we were just a little cooler, between 1 to 5 degrees cooler today, well, it may have been a much different day in terms of our forecast. Was seeing mostly freezing rain, but you can see those numbers did just barely get above that freezing mark. 35 already high in Harrisville, 37 down in Tallah City, and seeing 34s in Atlanta and Mile. Roger City and Ottawa, you actually saw some of the freezing rain early on before it did switch over to rain eventually, and we didn't see much impacts on, of that on the highway. Now, current temperatures starting to drop off. Currently at 35 in Oscoda, 34 back into Atlanta, 36 in Traverse City, more of the 20s and the 30s where they have seen a bunch of snow here into the UP, upwards to a foot or maybe even some of them above a foot of snow. So thank goodness we didn't see any of that. We're trying to get rid of all the snow that we currently have on the ground. Current winds, 15 miles per hour here in Alpena, 13 miles per hour down in Holton Lake, 6 in Flint and in Oscoda at 8 miles per hour. The winds, they will be gusty throughout the overnight, maybe gusting as high as 25 miles per hour. So make sure that if you are going to be heading outside, you do want to dress warmly. Scattered snow showers, they will be in the region for the overnight. Chilly and windy for Saturday as highs will be in the middle and the upper 30s. And winds will be anywhere between 10 to 20 miles per hour. But get ready for a very nice day on the way for us on Sunday as highs will make their way back in the upper 40s and the lower 50s. And we'll see mostly sunny skies with high pressure in control. It's just going to be an absolutely fabulous day for us across the region. But first, we have to get through tonight and tomorrow. And you can see that we'll still have some of the rain showers and also some of the snow left over for today. And then all that pushes off to the northeast by later on tonight. And later on, as we head on into our early next week. The jet stream, it really starts to punch all the way down towards the Gulf Coast, but spring is here. You can see that there will be rain showers on the back side or on the northern side of this jet stream, and once this next disturbance tries to push towards us, we will be watching out yet again for a rain-snow mix and not just all snow. So, yeah, we are starting to get those, those warmer conditions back into the region as we take a look at Futurecast and see how this system, it did start to push its way on towards the east throughout the day. The snow showers, they are going to be here for the overnight around 6 a.m. tomorrow morning. A few more clouds will be in the region as well as a few flurries across the area. That All that clears out by later tomorrow afternoon and tomorrow night, we will be mostly clear. 28 degrees tonight, winter makes it a reappearance with the snow and the very cool wind. 15 to 20 miles per hour. Tomorrow, expect on and off snow showers through the early portions of the day, but then during the afternoon, we'll see more of the clearing. Highs in the upper 30s down at Harrisville at 38 degrees, 39 a mile, while sitting at 38 in West Branch and 35 for a high in Onaway. Tomorrow night, clouds disappear. Southwest winds around 5 miles per hour, so we'll get rid of the wind as well as lows push down into the lower 20s and the upper teens into mile at 19 degrees. Taking a look at our day planner, we'll see the upper 30s for us here in Alpena for an afternoon high. And our extended outlook, things look very nice for us on Sunday. Monday, eh, also pretty nice for us before things start to get a little cooler on Tuesday. And let me just mention this. As we get later into next week, around Thursday and Friday, 
much warmer conditions look to be on the way. We'll be looking out for more 50s and maybe even possibly 60s. And now it is time for our Pets of the Week segment, and we are first going to start off with Tommy, who is a male Maine Coon mix. He is already neutered, his front, front two paws already declawed, major plus three to four years old, and he has gray, white, and a black fur. Our next pet, her name is Julie. She has not spayed yet. She's a little older, around six to seven years old, but you can see she's a little more hyper and active than our first pet was, and definitely would enjoy a home with children. Now, if you would like to call the Huron Humane Society about these two animals, please call 989-356-4794. Thank you, Adam. Now it's time for today's photo of the day. Today's photo was sent by Leonard Burdick of Tawas City. Leonard sent us this photo of a wood duck that was swimming around in the Tawas River yesterday. I bet the ducks are happy to be back home up north after a long freezing winter. Thanks, Leonard, for sending us this photo. If you have a photo you would like to send us, just email a photo along with a short description to news at WBKB11.com. Coming up on WBKB News, more evidence that lack of sleep can be hazardous to your health. Find out what it can increase the risk of up next in your Health Watch. Thanks for joining us tonight. In your Health Watch, some new advice for kidney disease patients. Take a walk. British researchers found just a moderate amount of exercise, 30 minutes of walking a day, five times a week, could help kidney disease patients reduce their risk of heart disease and infections. 60 million people worldwide suffer from chronic kidney disease. And hashtag ouch, researchers at the University of Michigan are using Twitter to track the effects of migraines. They poured through almost 22,000 tweets migraine sufferers sent during their painful attacks. Among the study's findings, women sent almost three quarters of the migraine tweets. In the U.S., migraine complaint tweets spiked at 9 a.m. and again at 8 p.m. Eastern on weekdays. And the most common day for migraines, Monday. Lack of sleep may increase your risk of stroke. That's according to a new study published in the American Heart Association journal Stroke. Researchers in Taiwan looked at the health records of more than 85,000 people. They found that over four years, people diagnosed with insomnia were 54% more likely to be hospitalized by a stroke. Findings show the risk seems particularly dangerous for young adults. And in national news in Texas, 10 of the 16 people injured in Wednesday's shooting at Fort Hood have been released from the hospital. The remaining six are said to be improving. What's not clear is just what drove Army Specialist Ivan Lopez to go on a shooting spree that also killed three soldiers before he committed suicide. CBS's Bigad Shaban has the latest from Fort Hood. Staff Sergeant Carlos Lazani Rodriguez was 38 years old. A soldier since he was 18, he was planning to retire from the Army later this year. Instead, his family is planning his funeral. Tony Monero called him his best friend. He had a real zest for life. And, uh, he's just a good guy, you know. Give you the shirt off his back kind of guy. Rodriguez died Wednesday at Fort Hood when a fellow soldier, Specialist Ivan Lopez, went on a shooting rampage before taking his own life. Also among the dead, Sergeant Daniel Ferguson of Tampa, Florida, and Sergeant Timothy Owens of Effingham, Illinois. Lopez was being treated for depression and anxiety and was undergoing an evaluation for post-traumatic stress. Underlying medical conditions are not a direct precipitating factor. Uh, we believe that the immediate precipitating factor was more likely an escalating argument in his unit area. In a statement, Lopez's father apologized, saying, My son could not have been in his right mind. He was not like that. Words of little comfort to those grieving. People lost their, uh, their family members. My friend, you know, he has a family. And, uh, you know, we're going to miss him very much. He's a very good guy. Begad Chaban, CBS News, Fort Hood, Texas. Now, Lopez reportedly told military doctors he had received a traumatic brain injury during his four months in Iraq, but investigators say they found no evidence of any such injury or that he received any wounds in action or contact with the enemy. Well, sports is coming up next, but first, Shannon, Shannon McGratton is here with a preview of what's ahead. Shannon? Ashley, the Tigers were back in action today taking on the Orioles. I'll have highlights coming up. But first, I'm taking you to Alpena Junior High, where the green and white girls basketball teams had quite a season. All that and more on WBKB News at 11.
After a successful volleyball season, one Wildcat wasn't sure her future plans in the sport, but today she committed to ACC, giving her more time to play a sport she loves. Alpina senior Taylor Genshaw is one of the newest Lumberjacks coming in this season. Last year, she was an all-region and all-conference honorable mention with 219 kills, 274 digs, and 30 aces. Genshaw ends her high school career ranked 8th in kills for Alpina, and although her position for next year has hasn't been set, she believes she's ready for the road ahead. I'm excited for this opportunity to still be able to play volleyball, which I love doing, and it's good because I'm still close to home. She's really a, a very quick, dynamic player, and, and I think that's something that she can bring to the ACC team. The junior high school basketball season might be over, but for Alpina's 8th grade girls green and white teams, the celebration is just beginning after winning the Big North title outright and recording the highest team GPA in school history. The junior Wildcats finished with a combined grade point average of 3.9 while doing equally as well on the basketball court with one team ending its season 8-1 and one and the other 7-2. Although some days were harder than others, Alpina preached all season the importance of academics before athletics, which caused the ladies to find a happy medium between the two all on their own. On bus rides home, they've got flashlights on, they're doing homework. Um, it's just, you can, you can take it easy. Um, because they're good students, they're also good athletes. They're very coachable kids and they want to learn. They want to get better. Last night, players' academic and athletic success were honored at an end-of-the-year banquet as the Junior Cats prepare for graduation before heading to high school for an even bigger adventure. It's just rewarding to work with a group of kids like that. Um, every day at practice is fun. Every day they learn something new, and uh, we're just sad to see the season end. We've just, we all played travel ball, and like in elementary school, we all played each other, and we just all knew each other, and it's just... It's so easy for us to play together and it's just been really fun. Baseball is back in full swing after the Tigers postponed their final game with the Royals yesterday. Today, Detroit welcomes Baltimore to Comerica Park in a three-game series that hits the ground running. Picking things up in the fourth following a 34-minute rain delay, Tigers up 3-2 when Rajah Davis gets his first hit of the season, and it's going out of the park. Detroit takes a 6-2 lead. Two batters later, Torrey Hunter steps up to the plate. He lasers one to left to put the Tigers up 7-2 after four innings. Miguel Cabrera extends Detroit's lead even more in the sixth, but it's in the eighth. The American League MVP goes into the seats for his 2,000th career hit. Detroit has 17 hits in today's outing, winning its third game of the season 10-4. On the ice, the Red Wings look to win their fourth straight game with Pavel Doksuk back. First five minutes of play, Darren Helm sends one in from the side. Oh, excuse me, here we go. We got the video. There's Darren Helm sending this one in for the side. Detroit up 1-0. Now on the power play, 10 minutes later, Thomas Yurko, I'm going to slow it down just so you can see that tip. He makes it a 2-0 Red Wings lead. And then Daniel Alfredson wants to join in on the fun after missing one game with a back injury. In the final seconds, Detroit is able to hang on, winning its fourth straight game 3-2. The Red Wings now have a three-point wild card lead over the Blue Jackets going into tomorrow's game at Montreal. Switching to the NBA, the Pistons at the Nets tonight. Three minutes left in quarter one. Brandon Jennings takes his time and actually falls into a three to put Detroit up four. Second quarter, Joe Johnson hits one from outside as time expires on the shot clock. Then the Pistons go coast to coast. Jennings dishes to Andre Drummond for two. Drummond ends his third straight game with a double-double. Final 15 seconds of the half, Jennings finds Josh Smith this time, who shows some range. Detroit ends the half down 12 and falls in its second straight game, 116-104. So the Red Wings, apparently at the end of the season is when they're going to start picking exactly. it up because they have now won four straight games. And ironically, they have been 3-2 wins the past three nights. So maybe 3-2 is just their magic number. Let's hope so, and then hopefully we'll see the Pistons pick it up sometime soon. Hopefully, because, you know, they just keep going farther <laughs> yeah. and farther behind Atlanta, and you just, you want to see them go into the postseason. All right, thanks, Shannon. Well, coming up on WBKB News, meteorologist Adam Claiborne will be back with one last look at weather.
Welcome back, everybody. Well, as you are heading out tomorrow, make sure that you do watch out for the little snow flurries. We already have the snow starting to fly tonight. Highs will be in the upper 30s, a little chilly for this time of the year, but tomorrow night will be even colder as it will be in the lower 20s. Taking a look now at our extended outlook, Sunday looks to be very nice for us. High of 50 degrees, mostly sunny skies. Monday won't be too bad either before our next disturbance comes in on Tuesday. All right, thanks, Adam. Well, to end our night, we're going to show you an impressive swimming champion, Anna Lomanazzi from Georgia. Yesterday, she showed off her training in a unique discipline, swimming with her hands and cuffs and her feet bound by chains as she trains to take on a much longer challenge. The 19-year-old who holds championships in Georgia and Azerbaijan and a Guinness World Record for crossing the Dardanelles Straits with her hands and legs bound swims in an ancient Georgian military training style. She demonstrated the style for Germany journalists and fans crossing the pool in just under 22 seconds, the time to beat for future Guinness record seekers. This style imitates the movement of dolphins and Lomanazzi's coach says it's not only a part of tradition he is working hard to reintroduce, but is also good for the human spine and health in general. So that's a task. I can barely get my breathing right swimming normally. So I can only imagine what she's doing there. <laughs> I, you know, when I was a kid, I always tried to be different animals in the water and Did I, you? Yeah, I failed miserably. So, you know, props to her for actually <laughs> tying her hands and her legs. Swimming like a because, dolphin. Yeah, I mean, I, I, like I said, I attempted. I was that kid, but <laughs> never worked out very well. Remember, you can read more about our broadcast stories and get the scoop on other news items online. Just visit WBKB11.com for sports weather and news updates anytime, day or night. And if you haven't already, add us on Facebook at Facebook.com slash WBKBTV. That will do it for tonight's show, but be sure to watch... It's not Ashley in the morning, is it? It's Friday. It's Eric Curry <laughs> Eric will be I. back <laughs> in with Shannon tomorrow night at 11. Have a great night.